Everybody, welcome back to Wicked Good Sports, and welcome back to At The Buzzer. We're joined, as always, by Ryan. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing good, Brian. Glad to hear it. So, it's been a little while since we talked about the Celtics here on the channel, so just kind of do a little, like, update, a bit of a finger on the pulse type of thing. A vibe. Uh, a vi- yeah, a vibe check, if you will. Um, I think, before we started talking, you said the vibes right now, all about Jalen Brown. <laughs> uh Crossing over, Luca. Do you want to talk about that for a second? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of buzz about the Luca Jalen matchup. Um, I would just say overall, I thought, you know, Jalen is an excellent, is a good two way player, right? And um, you really saw it in that game where, yeah, Luca did have 35 points. A lot of those points came towards the end. Um, he was really slow to start. With, and he was very inefficient, you know. Uh, taking an inefficient Luca all day. Um, I know he had at least one really nice block on him. Um, you know, there was that uh, clip of him crossing him up. Uh, you know, I do, I do think Jalen. The last, was the last two, no, not the last two games, but against Denver, which was three games ago, and against the Mavericks. I just think he does really uh, – he seems to do well when they give him, like, a tough defensive assignment. Um, you know, I kind of I kind of wonder, honestly, like, with Jalen, I feel like he's got such upside as a defensive player, but you kind of see he do, he's not that necessarily consistent on that side. Uh, I like, for instance, just, like, I, I certainly wouldn't consider him on the consistent – uh, like consistency wise on the level of like Jason Tatum as a two-way player. I mean, you know, beyond everything else, but uh, yeah, he does. It seems like if he's, you know, he did really well with him. I'm just wondering if like, you kind of give him like some more structure, kind of a special assignment. If he really like shines and those roles. So he, he did a really good job on those two players, I thought. And, you know, obviously it's a pretty good matchup. Like Jalen wants, would want Luca to cover him, I'm sure. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a rough go. Obviously, mm-hmm. like we know about Luca's struggles on defense. They don't they don't really matter, but <laughs> right. You know, you can get away with them when you're the most talented offensive player in the world. Right. Yeah. It's you know it's or good for one. him for that, you know. Yeah. Um, sure. I wanna I saw before coming on to uh Jalen Brown shared an edit. Uh, of him and uh, Christoph Porzingis, like a little highlight tape. And it was <laughs> captioned uh, Cookies and Cream. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you want to talk about how their dynamics been, how, how they've been working together. Uh, this right. year. I don't even feel like I, I, should, I should be sanctioned to comment on the Cookies and Cream. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a loss of process. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I, it's a great name, but I, if they end up playing together for a long time and winning a title, that'll go down as like a, you oh, know, sure. a one of the best duo names ever. On their dynamic, um, like yeah, I think it's cool to see. You know, um, I don't know. I feel like with some of the Celtics, like you talk about a vibe check. I think some people have kind of thought maybe like J- I don't think it's the case at all. I think maybe Jalen just has more of a serious demeanor sometimes, like. You know, there's talks of like there have been talks way in the past of him and Jason get along if he feels overshadowed, stuff like that. I think, yeah, you really see him getting along with Chris Stapps. Um, you can see they genuinely like each other, they play well together. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I mean, between the two of them and Tatum, I mean, they really it, it's a super team, so you know, it's nice to see them having fun with it. and you know, this is some, I, I, I'm, it makes me glad because it's something if like, right, these guys stick together for a while and they, they can make it work, it, it, it can be really dangerous. You know, yeah, it's all about the modern NBA, like um, two of the most sought after things right now are like the six 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 seven like guard forward wing types, right? That's like highly desired. Um, two-way players, so Jalen and Jason right there, right? And obviously like uh, Tatum being one of the, best players in the league and you know just being an incredible playmaker now defender rebounder everything that's huge and then the other thing you talk about is like you know the big thing now obviously is he's crazy seven foot like 
wacky inflatable tube guys <laughs> that just uh, shoot threes and yeah. and block seventeen shots. Mm-hmm. Everyone's, you know, of course, Chet and Wemby, no doubt. But I would like to point out to everyone that Chris Tapps Porzingis against the Rockets had six threes and five blocks. I'd have to double check, but I believe that was a record. Yeah. So, you know, pretty good move in this off season here. Uh, you know, so do you, do you have any comment on uh, the Bucks hiring Doc Rivers? Oh, they hired him? Oh, I guess they haven't hired him yet, but like it's in the ether right now. It's in the, it's out in the world. I just think personally, the whole this that whole situation is a little suspect to me, just in the sense of like, I mean, they clearly are very desperate to keep you honest, right? We know that. Um, you can see it from them firing Budenholzer, and then they uh, or Budenhauser, however you say it. Um, then he, after that, they hired. Why can't I remember his first name? AJ is it AJ Griffin's father? Um, as a coach, uh, you know, I believe that was Giannis's pick. Uh, then they do the Dame trade. Obviously, their defense suffers, uh, you know, but they're still in second place. And then they fire the coach. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be like a first uh, that I've seen when teams this good. I thought some of the coach firings last year were pretty wild, like, right? Mm-hmm. Like um, Monty Williams and Phoenix. Like, there mm-hmm. were just a lot of, right? But to do it like, before the all-star break um you know on a team that's literally in second place i Mm -hmm. and again i i'm sure i just kind of wonder what's going on there because that would suggest that they seem to think that he was the problem um you know him not locking in uh strategy wise on the defensive end Mm -hmm. i don't know how legitimate that is because again i just don't like your defense is going to suffer when you have Dame instead of Drew. Yeah, of course. That's a that is a huge defensive blow. I mean, it's a it's a huge offensive boost uh, to have Dame, but it it is a defensive blow. And I mean, I know that Dame Lillard has said himself that he's having a hard time adjusting in Milwaukee. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know that. There's like person per you know. I believe he's going through. He's having a hard time having to be in Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he uh, moved to Milwaukee, so yeah. No, so- um, Heart goes out to him. Uh. He's going through a divorce, which, like, honestly, sounds like a place that sounds like almost a place to be. You know, I just want to live in it, just like drink Uh beer and a stale beer and a couch in Milwaukee. What what screams eat a lot of cheese, middle aged divorcee more than just Milwaukee, like Mm -hmm. maybe Pittsburgh. But (laughs) Pittsburgh, oh man, no, I hey, I mean, it's tough. Uh, it's a tough situation, obviously, for him. Uh, it's an adjustment. Did they get divorced because she was like, "I'm not moving to Milwaukee." <laughs> Honestly, that would. I don't. I don't know anything about it, but on her side, if that's the case, no. Yeah, I, no, hundred percent. That's reasonable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he asked me to move to Milwaukee. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof. That wasn't. Uh, I thought we were talking Miami, Dame. I don't. No, I don't no, that. Yeah, that is true. Such a. I know that was the thing. It was like Miami and that's just, yeah, Milwaukee. But obviously to play next to Giannis is pretty special. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, but um, what I was going to say was aside from aside from that, like, um, you know, making light of a man's divorce, which is <laughs> a little intense. Okay, that's why people come to Wicked Good Sports. Uh, not for the class, for the... <laughs> but uh, anyway... <laughs> I was going to say, um, I think the, a big part of that is that he, he doesn't have his kids around. So I don't know, you know, I, I have to look at his numbers. He's obviously a second option for the first time ever in his career. Like his, his usage rates were just through the roof in Portland, especially at the end when McCollum was gone, you know, he was everything. Um, I just think to fire a coach this early is just kind of a weird, it's just an interesting move. And, when I, 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 I'm I kind of surprised at this point that, I mean, I don't know. Are they just desperate if they're going to hire Doc, if you want my honest opinion? I mean, I think people have been a little hard on him since he got fired from Philly. But I, I think at this point, it, it, there's kind of the argument, not only like when was the last time he was a good coach, but it was like, 
was he ever a really, really good coach? I think that that yeah. he, it's gone to that it's point. Right? No, it's yeah. gone to that point with Doc. It has, I think, and that's not to say he's, you know, obviously a very talented dude. But I just don't. I think if you're Milwaukee, I'm just kind of scratching my head. Yeah. No. If, well, if, yeah. if you fired your if you fired your coach that early in to hire Doc Rivers, because yeah. I mean, this is this was his first coaching job. It's a high pressure situation. You're still in second place. You're still in second place, right? Maybe yeah. thing expectations were higher, but like you're still competitive. Yeah, and, thirty-one and thirteen behind so the thirty-four and ten Celtics. Hey, let's think about the Celtics with Ime the first year. At this point in the season, they were awful. I don't even think they were playoff contenders. I remember very clearly on the show talking with Jack like are they going to trade Jalen Brown like are they going to break up uh Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum like it all turned around after yeah. you know the midway point of the season but yeah this time then it was a mess I had some crazy ideas I don't want to <laughs> you're glad that you weren't on the show yet <laughs> yeah I had some hot takes for sure uh it was not pretty I remember like it's kind of right around the summer. Um, I want to say they lost to like the Knicks, and, and mm-hmm. I forget. I just was so done with like, so done with watching that team. Um, yeah. You know, and all they needed to do was make a couple, of, make a couple of moves, and for the players to buy in. Um, it yeah. doesn't. I don't know that. I don't think uh, he was necessarily an inmate uh, type, but I don't think it was like a matter of them not buying in. But mm-hmm. I'm not really sure either. Right. So I just don't think it's fair. I, yeah, I thought it was a very odd move, and then to. I I feel like there's another coach we're not thinking of who didn't get hired. Right. Who could potentially fit in better. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, yeah. I I gotta ask you this. Um, while we're on not to, uh, Celtics topics, mm-hmm. Terry Rozier traded, uh, to the heat and Kyle Lowry traded from the heat. What are your thoughts on that trade? Um, who gives a, no, it's a pretty, uh, no, we're not, it's going to look bad when we're fucking playing a game seven against Miami. Again, the playoffs somehow. C- minus players. <laughs> pass their pe- no, I, no, it's on it. No, I'm kidding. Um, there it's a, I think it's actually a smart trade for both teams. Because I think when you look at New Orleans, you have this like pretty exciting young core, and you all you you just have Lamelo, right? And but Lamelo gets injured a lot. That's kind of the downside right now. Mm-hmm. So when he's out, you kind of want a sure fire like point guard who can just kind of kind of just maintain the pieces, you know. And still, like obviously, it's not like when Lamelo's out there, but you can kind of still run a system and get those guys going a bit. And then when Lamelo comes, they're even better. Um, right. You know, I'm not saying Kyle Lowry is at 100%, but Terry Rozier is not that. Um, you know, so I think it was really smart on that end. And on, you know, Miami Heat, you know, they can always use some scoring. And uh, Terry Rozier will fit in maybe with, like, the hard work culture. Um, it's going to be really interesting because I don't know, like, it's like him and Tyler Harrow, like, now? Or are they going to be the point guards? Like, Right, yeah, it's like what do they do super different from one another that would like make you want this trade to, yeah. to happen? You know, you got a less efficient version of Tyler Harrow who, right. who actually is more trigger happy, mm-hmm. uh, less likely to pass. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but so it, if you have those two out together, it's pretty rough because mm-hmm. at least Kyle Lowry, even his old age, he's, he's pretty good with the foul play. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's learned to the, yeah. get to the line to increase the uh, the old points. Yeah, like a flop thing on D yeah. as a smaller guy. Um, mm. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think it, it, it definitely it was huge for Terry Rozier, right? Because I feel like he, it was just kind of like, oh man, remember that guy who takes like a thousand shots a game? <laughs> a really right. team just stealing shots from these young from Lamelo Ball and Brandon Miller. Mm-hmm. Now he gets to be on a team where he can make an impact. You know, he will have games where he will probably score like 30 points. Right. And he will get hot, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And maybe, I don't know. I, 
maybe if they put him in a more primary role, maybe he thinks he's more fit to that. Maybe he'll play a little harder. I'm not really sure what the dynamics were, but mm-hmm. yeah, I like it. I mean, I like, I also like the, um, separate, I like the New Orleans, like New Orleans. Like I think LaMelo is so underrated. Mm-hmm. He's so good. And then, uh, I think Brandon Miller is going to be pretty solid. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's like a second. Our boy. But he, he might win. What? And our boy Zion. Wait, Zion? On New Orleans? Oh, I said New Orleans. I meant, yeah. oh my God. I, they used to be the New Orleans Hornets. Um, right, right. Uh, no, I meant the Charlotte Hornets. Charlotte Hornets. Sorry, Zion. Yeah, okay. no, I was like, I mean, well, there was a talk a while ago of Zion getting traded there. With oh, that's something. That would be pretty wild. But, yeah. uh, no, but like, and I like Mark. Uh, you probably don't know Mark Williams, the center from mm-hmm. Duke. Uh, yeah, yeah. Miles, Br- I mean Miles Bridges. Uh, mm-hmm. So Williams. interesting yeah. team there. You got to. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anything else you want to talk about before we get on out of here? Uh, no, I think I think that's all I got. Uh, Celtics are playing the Miami Heat tonight. I mm-hmm. doubt Terry Rozier is playing. That would be pretty interesting. I almost would like. I'd be a little like nervous. I don't know why. I could just, I feel like his first game, like on the Miami Heat, it would be like, could be an annoying game. She's like, makes no terrorism here, just scores like 38 points. Yeah. Back against his old team. It'd yeah. be, it'd be perfect. It'd be really lined up well. All right, Ryan, where can uh, they find you online? Anything you want to promote? Floor is yours. Um, I do not have anything online. Okay. Hey, that's it. That's all right. I have plenty to plug uh, for us. So uh, check out the website, wickedgoodeverythingsports.com. And then we have, obviously, this channel, Wicked Sports, is on TikTok. Also, Wicked Sports. We have the main channel, Wicked Everything, and our podcasting channel, Better Radio. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Ryan, thanks as always. We'll see you all in the next one.